Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've really got one story and it's going to affect the traditional market and I believe uh, in our market of cryptocurrency digital assets. First and only up, massive GameStop short squeeze highlights the fragility of today's financial system. And we're gonna take a look at how Wall Street is gonna take a big fat L because they try to push the little guy around a little bit too much and the little guy fought back and they won. So we'll go over all that and what is going on with the price and how the uppers are actually stepping in and making this really an unfair advantage. Uh, but we'll get to that all that in a bit. Let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is, is it January 28th, 10 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. And here's what we got with our market. So Bitcoin doing pretty good, up 6% for the day. We're looking at 32.3. Maybe we could turn the corner, maybe hit 33, 34,000, maybe back to our all-time highs of 41K. I'll take it. Ethereum also up 6%. Huh. That's, that's a rare to see like a six and a six. And we're looking at 1350. Uh, one of the all-time highs for Ethereum was around 1420, 1440. So, hey, doing pretty good. Tether, nobody cares. Polkadot up 10%, uh, one of the big plays. And uh, one of the uh, big predictions that I have for uh, this year, it's at $17 right now, up 10% for the 24-hour. Amazing. XRP, watch out. It pegged the quarter just about. Uh, 26 cents. Wow. Cardano, 10%. Chainlink, 12%. Litecoin. This is a little bit deceiving because over the last couple of days, we've, we've taken a pretty big hit. So right now it's a green day. So don't let this fool you. Don't, don't come here and be like, oh, this is great. It's a fantastic. It is a good day. I mean, take, take the wins that, that you get. But uh, just remember that we were taking a little bit of a beating there for a while. And uh, we were thinking it was going to go to the downside. But we've turned the corner. It looks like it's okay. Will this keep going up forever? No because that's not how this market works, especially ours. We're gonna go up massively and we're gonna have big dips and that's just how it is. But like I always say in 2021, I believe this is going to be uh, the year for us. So that is what's going on. Anything fantastic, anything up bigly? Oh, this thing called Dogecoin. Look at that, 142%. Well, that's good. <laughs> no, uh, congratulations for all you Doge holders. I hold a little bit of Doge. I've held it forever. I just. I don't even really talk about it because I'm just like, it's just doge. And it's one of those things like everybody who's a maximalist, <laughs> you got your Bitcoin maximalist, you, you have, there's really no Ethereum maximalist if you think about it, but then you got your XRP arm and your chain link marines and everything else. But nobody's like, hates on doge, just like, ah, it's doge. So like, uh, if anybody gets in a heated argument, you know, like, oh, but you know about Bitcoin, you know about this, just break it up and go, yeah, but what's doge doing? And then it kind of diffuses the whole situation. So congratulations, Doge uh, users and, and, uh, and uh, hodlers. You're up 142% for in 24-hour time frame. Congratulations. Good for you. All right. So let's just break in this top story because this was pretty interesting to me. And I think it's got, it's got ramifications about what's, what can happen and what people in power can really do. And at first glance, it's like, well, good for the little guy. But then we take a look at another article and be like, well, that sucks. So here's what's going on. Massive GameStop short squeeze. What the heck is this? So Wall Street, they had a bunch of short bets against GameStop. GameStop, if you don't know, I think it's a global uh, brand, but you can go there, you can rent, uh, you can rent a bunch of games, you can, you can actually buy gaming equipment and all this great stuff. The problem is with GameStop is that uh, people download a lot of things these days and they don't really buy the physical uh, games themselves. So they were slipping for a while. But because of the, the COVID-19, uh, people were at home playing a lot of games. They're like, hey, you know what? I'll go buy a game. And they love it. They love uh, GameStop. So there's a members of these, uh, as a Reddit forum called Wall Street Bets. And this is the actual picture that you'll see. You'll see a lot in Twitter and everything else. So they discovered these short positions that Wall Street had all banded. And it's not like Wall Street's evil. They're just not good. <laughs> That's the best I can say it. But these guys, Wall Street Bets, they discovered the short positions and they turned things around by purchasing the stock and placing long positions on GameStop shares. On Tuesdays, on Tuesday, which a couple days ago, today's Thursday, uh, GameStop's stock spiked 148% as GME trade volume outpaced the S&P 500 and almost every stock worldwide. And why was it? Because a group of people banded together and said, no, we're not gonna let you guys F us around, and we're going to make sure that you pay for what you're doing to our beloved GameStop. And that's it. And uh, I was listening to Alex's, Alex's show, which he's going to be on a guest. He's going to be here in a little bit. And what they were talking about was like, uh, 
you got to watch the show. I forgot what, what CJ was talking about, but it's like these uh, TD Ameritrades and these big companies, they were selling all the information of what they had as far as retail investors, like you and me, what they were doing to these big hedge funds, like, oh, well, we got this data, now we'll just go against that. And that's exactly what they did. That's why they've been crushing retail here and there. But the, the, the big thing is, is who said it? I forgot who it was. it was. I think it was actually Ryan. He said, there's a difference between smart money and hot money. And when you got a bunch of people with a bunch of money and it's hot and it's burning a hole in your pocket and you want to spend, sometimes even the smart money, the people that are in power, well, they get burned and that's just how it is. So that's exactly what is happening right now. Um, so it all started with the subreddit Wall Street Bets. They invoked a thread about the end game scenario for the GameStop company. Uh, they've been hurting financially. And then really what it comes down to is that these guys are just trying to make a bunch of money at Wall Street by shorting the situation. And all of Alex explained that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. and they did a short squeeze. So what they did was they said, okay, you guys want to short it? Well, that's cool. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put money on into it and we're going to make it so uncomfortable for you guys that we're going to rip your face off and you guys just keep shorting our beloved GameStop because we'll do this all day long. And that's exactly what they did. So here's the price action for GameStop for the last five days. Pretty flat, 55 bucks. It was, you know, a little bit of a, a jump here in 119, but back down. Pretty droll, pretty depressing, right? It's just, um, it just moved sideways. And then all of a sudden, they, they heard about these shorts, like, well, F you. And then here they go, 351, 368. And all those people that were shorting it, they got creamed. How much did they get creamed? I'll tell you in a second. So this is what's interesting, though. So this was yesterday, Wednesday, when all this information came about. Then you had Tuesday. So just Wednesday was the big day. That's what everybody was talking about. But take a look what happened here. So at 9.30 a.m., so the markets close. Oh, and that's another thing. Traditional markets, they close. We don't close. Um, they closed, and then uh, they opened it up, a little bit of a dip. Then there was a little bit of a rally here, and it went up massively, 469. But now we're down here. What the heck happened? Well, I'm going to tell you what happened. And this, in my opinion, is, is uh, the way that power balances out by these people, these hedge funds, you on Wall Street, running to their uppers and going, oh, we're losing. Robinhood TD Ameritrade restrict trading of GameStop AMC stock. Why? Robinhood explained the move in a blog post Thursday morning, this morning, just before the stock exchange opened. In light of recent volatility, we are restricting transactions for certain securities to position, closing only, including everything we just talked about. The uh, WSB mod Twitter account, which is tied to the Wall Street bets, the ones we just saw, subreddit community, uh, responded in a tweet. Individual investors, us, are being stripped of their ability to trade on the Robinhood app. Meanwhile, hedge funds and institutional investors can continue to trade as normal. This is not the America that I remember it to be. I remember that free market capitalism was the backbone of what made this country great. And now here we are, and these guys are running to TD Ameritrades and, and Robinhood and going, oh, we can't do this, we're losing too much money. Those guys have been screwing us for so long because of all the information that they've had, and they've made retail investors pay. Now the one day, one day, whoa. <laughs> one day, I got a little bit too excited. One day, when all this stuff went down, they're like, we can't handle it. And this is what happens. I don't know if there should be some more regulation coming, but if you're going to regulate our market because you say there are some uh, shady practices, then you best be believing there should be some regulation over in the traditional markets. That is just how I see it. Let's jump in and talk to head of institutional uh, investment over at Bquant, Alex Mascioli, and he's going to explain two things. One, he's going to talk about uh, how these people lose money, and two is going to talk about what this means for our market as far as all the different big institutions that are betting on shorting Bitcoin. This is important. Let's jump in. All right, buddy. So welcome to the office. So I brought in Alex Mascioli because he is the expert of uh, financials as far as like our, our hedge funds and the uh, institutional investors. So, so Alex, here's the thing. What we just saw and we just talked about what was happening off, off with GameStop. Let me share my screen real quick. So we just talked about this story about uh, Wall Street bets. 
how they had just said, you know what, we don't care what you guys are doing. We're going to run you off, off the shorts and we're going to make sure that you don't make a dime and we're going to wreck you. And then from there, we took a look at the price. And then also we took a look at what's going on because of TD and Meritrade and then restricting all the different selling. So first of all, I got two questions for you. First of all, how do they make money doing that as shorting? And second of all, since you deal with all those billion dollar people, tell us what we need to know here in the cryptocurrency digital asset market. Have you heard about shorts being uh, set for Bitcoin and how much inflows are actually happening? Sure. Well, particularly in the equities market, um, short selling is when investor uh, opens a position by borrowing shares of a stock. Uh, and the investor believes they will decrease in value at a future date, um, which is the expiration date. Okay. Uh, what, happens what happens next is the investor borrows the shares uh, and sells them to buyers who are willing to pay the market price. Um, but actually what's really, uh, what your downside is, is the, the risk of loss on the short sale is unlimited because the price of the asset can climb uh, you know, indefinitely. That's what they were talking about. They were saying, you know what, you can, you can short all you want to, but your risk is going to keep going to infinity. But it sounds like to me what these guys are doing, like you go ahead and short it. But what we're going to do is we're going to keep pumping money into it. And you guys are going to get your faces ripped off. That's what it sounds like is happening to these hedge funds. That's correct. So what they're doing is they're getting blown out of their short positions um, with their borrows. Uh, and and it's, uh, it's actually, it's pretty hard press. I would not, I would not... Mm. It's out of the realm that some of these hedge funds actually uh, the smaller ones could collapse if they had decent positions in the stock. That's why we're seeing these people step in like the TD Ameritrades, like the big guys going, you know what, our buddies are getting hurt. We're going to stop this because of volatility. And that's it. I think this is a huge mistake. And I think there's going to be some other regulation come on the pipe just because of this issue. I'm just saying it could actually happen. So that's the first question answered. Thank you so much for helping us out. The second question is, what's going on in our market? So I don't really care about that one. I care about this one. So tell us about what you've been hearing and who you've been dealing with as far as like people going, hey, Alex, over at Bitcoin, we're going to short this and that. So let us know. Insider stuff. Well, not yeah. insider stuff, but, but uh, behind the scenes stuff, we'll say. Yeah, behind the scenes stuff. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we, uh, we have a lot of hedge fund clients in the crypto space that um, do uh, short selling uh, against Bitcoin. Um, and so what we are seeing largely is, uh, well, this week, particularly alone, I have about 40 million in USDT uh, borrow demand. And those borrows that those funds are looking for are going to be used to finance their short positions against Bitcoin in the short term. So I would say uh, during the course of the first half of February, um, I'm preparing just from an indication of our clients to uh, see a lot of short positions placed. Okay, so 40 million, but you were talking about at, at one point you're saying it, it's not just 40 million. If they leverage it, then it can go up to how much? Yeah, that's correct. So if, if they leverage it, uh, let's call it, um, let's, let's just say 10 times. Uh, if they if they leverage it ten mm. times, they can go a half a billion dollars into a sh into short positions against Bitcoin. Holy shoot! That's uh, okay. So this is why I love having you on the show because we can't get this information anywhere else. So everybody else who's watching the, watching the video, first of all, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Also, check out Alex Masioli's show because he's got these types of information which you're not going to get anywhere, and that's just the truth. This makes me a little bit bearish and a little bit more, a little trepidation, trepidation of what's going on in this market. So Alex, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right. So that's it. So just like Alex was talking about, he said, look, there's going to be short positions uh, halfway through February. I did a video yesterday and I talked about Michael Saylor, who he's inviting all, he's, he's inviting all these institutional players to come in and or sorry, corporations to come in and he's going to give them the Bitcoin playbook, everything that he's done everything that his company is doing and will be doing and how to set everything up with uh, the Coinbase's, the Krakens of the world and how it's all going, that everybody should be actually purchasing Bitcoin. Now, I told you yesterday, I said, I don't think that every single one that's going to attend is going to be like, okay, let's do it. And we're ready to do from day one. They're going to digest this. They're going to bring it back to their legal team, their, their CFOs and go, should we be doing this? Here's the playbook. They're going to look it all over and then they're going to go. I think some, are already planning to do it. They just want the playbook from Michael Saylor, which they're going to get on February 3rd and 4th, and they're going to come out the gate. The other ones, though, 
they're gonna be laggards and they're gonna come in. But again, like I said, I think if it was me sitting in this room or even online, which is what it is, and actually I will be there uh, to uh, check this stuff out. So if, I, if it was me and I had a big corporation, I'm looking around going, who's all here? Uh, there's Jerry, there's Joe, oh man, there's Pete. And, and, and you'd be thinking to yourself, wow, these guys are all competing with me to get this one super scarce asset. I think we're gonna see fireworks. But again, in the short term, expect some some volatility, uh, just like what Alex talked about. All right, so that's it, so that is it. So thanks for uh, watching this all the way to the end. If you made it this far, uh, first of all, thank you. Why don't you hit the thumbs up, uh, why don't you subscribe, and why don't you uh, come back again. Uh, all this information that we give, it's a lot of news type of thing, so it's uh, time sensitive. So go ahead and uh, hit us up, That would I would appreciate it greatly. Also, if you like these particular types of videos, there's more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. Let YouTube do its magic. And that is it for today. So thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.